Carrie, I okay. Can we can we talk about Gretchen? Oh, Queen Gretchen! I saw you put her picture on here. Well, did yeah, you see what it. happened yesterday? I did. Uh, I thought it was funny because I saw somebody. You know the movie? Oh, I know you know this movie, Cabin in the Woods. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> You know the part where they have people do that meme. I don't know if you've seen the meme, but they do a meme of a screenshot from the film where he's pointing at the board and he, and he's going, "Hey, who had the oh. Gretchen being kidnapped on the board for 2020 <laughs> and the president getting COVID?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, maintenance always gets it right. Um, yeah. So yeah, for those of you who haven't seen this. Um, the FBI yesterday said that they charged 13 people uh, in a plot to kidnap uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmore. Whitmer. And um, there's some mis- misinformation going around about what this is. There is a – at first there was uh, indications. They said that they were, they were part of this group, this militia group. Uh, called, I think it was called Wolverine, wait, Wolverine Warriors? I think something like that. Wolverine Watchmen, that's what it was. Um, And there were reports that Wolverine Watchmen was actually the Michigan Militia Corp Wolverines, this MMCW thing whose website is now down. I went through and looked at all this. I, I went and read their handbook. It didn't seem like they would at all be the kind of group that would do this. And it turns out today when I woke up, uh, <laughs> mainstream media was going, oops, they're not related to that militia group. Okay. So thank, thank you for your great reporting mainstream media. Um, so these poor <laughs> people got, just got vilified as being like, oops, oh, they weren't. In fact, that group, uh, helps the FBI, uh, to capture them. Well, so by the way, speaking <laughs> of vilifying groups that are not responsible, <laughs> Yeah, I saw I saw the governor's tweet or or statement about this after the fact, and mm-hmm. guess who she targeted in her the Proud Boys. Proud Boys. <laughs> Proud Boys. Proud Boys had nothing to do with this. What are you yeah. talking about? Like, yeah, literally nothing to do with it. So, um, <laughs> but I do think there's some there's something worth talking about here because so, um, what's his name? Robbie, uh, crap. What's his name? The the reason guy, Starbuck, Robbie Starbuck. Sorry. Um, snagged a bunch of videos from a couple of these these guys that are accused of this, and um, before they got pulled down, obviously because social media sites are pulling everything down because you're not supposed to. I don't understand why they pull things down. Like, wouldn't that be the time then people can go read for themselves and see what these people thought? But no, we're gonna pull it down. So they pull all the stuff down just because they're accused of a crime, and uh. But he pulled some stuff down, and one of the guys, I just want to talk about this for a minute, because so one of the guys, Brandon Caserta, had an anarchist flag in the background uh, in, in one of his videos, and in the picture, he had a don't tread on me flag in the background. The anarchist flag was the black flag with the red anarchist logo, which does matter because that's a little bit, that's usually not the same as the don't tread on me group, so it's kind of unclear um, what his beliefs were, but you've got people on the left saying these were radical right and caps. Actually, I've seen I've seen people say this is the and cap people um, trying to do this, and you see people on the right saying it's not us. He doesn't like Trump, and there's a video of him saying Trump is not your friend. He's a tyrant. Every single person that works for the government is your enemy. This is this is this guy saying right? Um, and wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I wanna I wanna talk about this because I think that. It's going to be – culture is going to get increasingly uncomfortable for anyone with any kind of principles. There are going to be people on your side who do things that you don't agree with. It's going to happen. They are going – like everyone's trying to distance themselves and be like, he's not us. It's not us. It's going to be us at some point. It is going to be someone who is mostly in agreement but has a screw loose or whatever, is, you know. It, there's always like the guy who shot up the Republican uh, baseball game was a Bernie Sanders supporter. That doesn't mean that Bernie Sanders believes all the things, but like you, you can't deny that he was a Bernie Sanders supporter. You've got to be honest about this. And it may be that this guy 
maybe he is of an ANCAP. I don't know. I, I, I listened to his stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it, but, but maybe, um, I'm just going to hear some points that he made in his video. And by the way, the reason I really want to go through this is I think most people that listen to this show will listen to these points and go, they're not that crazy. These points aren't that crazy. The behavior of kidnapping a governor and plotting to do that is crazy. Like that's a bad thing. But the points aren't crazy by many people's standards. So one point he made was, and by the way, these people are not very articulate. So it's not, you know, it's this, this reminds me of, I just want to cut in. Yeah. This reminds me of, of like the Unabomber, for example, who right. had a lot of great points. If you haven't read his manifesto, you should, especially now. Right. But here's the problem. When you have some of the right points and ideas, but you allow yourself to become a person who thinks the ends justify the means and to behave in a way that makes you a hypocrite and to do evil things because you think your ends are just, will you just make it that less likely that people are going to listen to your ideas? Because now you've forever tarnished, like the Unabomber has forever tarnished his good ideas with the fact that he's a murderer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. And and look, the reason I, the reason I'm saying this is because I don't want to be I don't want to be one of these people who says, well, he's not an ANCAP. I don't I don't I don't think he necessarily is. You can judge for yourself, but he might be. He did have a "Don't Tread on Me" flag, uh, and like some of the stuff he talks about does comport with things that I believe. So I don't I, I think you owe it to people to have the integrity to say like, yeah, that guy believed a lot of the same things I do. It doesn't mean I would do that thing, but he like, so I don't want to run away from him like everyone else is doing. Um, so yeah. So he says one point he makes is the police enforce laws, uh, their order followers, and that makes them the enemies and you're not going to achieve freedom. So he's talking about freedom. You're not going to achieve freedom by continuing to support these people. Now, look, I've got, you guys all know, I'm ambivalent about the police. Sometimes I think that's a good point to remember, that the police are the ones who are going to enforce laws as laws get worse. It is going to be the police. And fewer and fewer police are be good because the the more tyrannical the laws become, the less uh, good people want to be police. That happens. So that's not a bad point. He says the Declaration of Independ Independence is an anarchist document. Uh, I'm not sure I totally agree with that, but it, it was throwing off a government. Fine. He talks about the Constitution setting up a ruling class. Well, kind of do have a ruling class now, guys. That's kind of true. Um, he, he does the Trump is not your friend, dude thing. He's a tyrant. Look, I, obviously, I don't believe that. He's not a tyrant. Um, another the another guy, Pete Musico, says, uh, a, a, again, some of these, there's like a, a grain of truth, but not completely in some of these. He says, we are destroying everything because boomers have destroyed the family. Now, that sounds hyperbolic, but if you are concerned about the disintegration of the family and what America has become over the last several generations or decades, who's most who's been in charge? The boomers. They're the old people who've been in charge for a while. So whatever's gone wrong, they kind of are culpable. Not, And I don't mean individual boomers. And not only boomers, and not you, if you're a boomer, it doesn't mean you're responsible, but as a group, look, the millennials, someday we're going to look back and go, the millennials really effed up X, Y, and Z. And we're all going to be like, yep, they did. And I'm sure I'm Gen X. Someone will have nasty things to say about what Gen X did. But the boomers have been the ones Which in charge. Nothing. You've right, done nothing. nothing. Sure. <laughs> the boomers have been the ones in charge for a while, and they're responsible for a lot of the stuff. So... um, he, he rants about driving being a right and not a privilege. I kind of agree with that. Um, but it's messy because you've got these things called roads, which are, quote, public property and blah, blah, blah. Like So it gets messy. But OK. He says that boomers are robbing families. And I don't know what he means by that. But uh, when you spend more money as a government than you take in, you are robbing future generations. And the boomers, I mean, I know everyone loves Reagan. A lot of people love Reagan. <laughs> Reagan, Reagan borrowed a hell of a lot of money, right? We, we, we've, we have spent way more than we've made and borrowed and printed money to do it. 
And that is called robbing future generations. That's what that's called. He is not wrong about that. And boomers have been in charge, not just boomers, not all boomers, but boomers have been in charge and have been, they've perpetuated that system. They're the ones who've done that. Um, and again, not just boomers. Uh, he complains that boomers, he knows some boomers, I guess, and they say that now that I'm older, I don't care because it's not going to affect me. Okay, that's an anecdote, but there is a general feeling of like, well, I paid into Social Security. I want my Social Security. Okay, but you voted for Social Security, and then you voted for the people who spent all your Social Security checks on other things. So should you still get Social Security? I don't know. You're kind of having your cake and eating it too. There, There is this sense that they're owed stuff, uh, but they ate the cake of their grandchildren. That's a real grievance, regardless of whether you agree with this politics. These are real grievances. Um, he urged people to be angry at politicians and not fellow citizens. He said they're putting a bug in our ear for racism. Well, that's true. You should be angry at politicians in the government and not fellow citizens. They are putting racist bugs in your ear. They are trying to get you to fight each other. That's true. He rants about they have no right to tell you to wear a seatbelt. That's true. It's trivial and I don't care, but... <laughs> He says, look, it's your car. You bought it. It's only your safety. Why do they have a right to tell you to wear a seatbelt? Those are good questions. Um, he says the government is starting to overreach. Frankly, I think that's an understatement. <laughs> like, what do you mean they're starting to overreach, dude? They've been overreaching for my entire life. And so he says we need to step up against the government, not each other. And then he rants about Fourth Amendment violations. Another totally valid thing to be upset about. Again, these people are not articulate. I do not approve of plans to kidnap governors and start civil wars. I think they also plan to execute her, right? So this is not, well, these are not people that have, like, I would say a good moral plan for the future, but their grievances are, their grievances aren't completely illegitimate. And I don't think that we should dismiss them as crazies and be like, well, they're just some crazy anarchists. Their grievances are, are shared by a lot of people. And the reason I think it's important to see that is because as things become more tyrannical, more and more people that oppose tyranny, but are on the edge about where they're to draw the line for their own initiation of force in their own head, more people are going to do stuff, right? There's a quote that's misattributed to Thomas Jefferson that goes, I'm saying Go bad stuff. Like, Bad stuff. like people, yeah, people are going to have legit, like these are legitimate grievances, some of them that are not being addressed and people who are disempowered, some people who are disempowered are going to decide just like social justice people do that the ends justify the means and they're going to allow right. themselves to become monstrous and to try to do monstrous things. So, right, right. And so, and look, there, there's a quote that's misattributed to Thomas Jefferson, but uh, it's still a good quote. It, it's, it goes, when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. And there is truth to that, right? If we were, a lot of people I think would agree, if this was Nazi Germany, you should rebel, right? That's a, that's a clear example. You should rebel. Um, so, and I, and I don't think we're Nazi Germany. I don't think Trump is Nazi. <laughs> Trump's not Hitler, right? It's not time. But uh, the more tyrannical governments become, they picked on Gretchen precisely because she was a very tyrannical governor with respect to mask laws and, and the lockdowns, right? Again, not justifying their so, actions, but these are real grievances. And you are going to have people who don't want to be ruled starting to step up and willing to do things that you and I will say are the initiation of force and they really shouldn't be doing them. This isn't the best way to go about change, but it's going to start getting more, and especially if we have. I'm confused, though. You sound like you are supporting it in a way because you just read that Thomas Jefferson quote. I mean, you're saying we should rebel when things get tyrannical. I don't think we should rebel in terms of like starting to kidnap people. I, I don't think you do either. Like, I think th I think at some point you do need to do that. I don't think we're at that point. Um, uh, OK, yeah, that's yeah. great. I don't, I don't think so. But so if Hitler were actually in charge, you would still just try and vote him out. I don't I don't think that I don't think that's a good I think that's almost like the, the postmodernist social justice warrior we talked with yesterday who said, 
here's a hypothetical scenario where no because hitler's not hypothetical he really happened and tyrants like that really do happen there does come a point at which armed rebellion is i don't think we're there i want to be clear i don't think we're there yeah but there does but come a point is, at which that, be, that becomes okay no, dang, this is what social justice warriors do. They're like, everyone's Hitler. That's why we need to go out in the streets and burn businesses down. It's not what social down, justice warriors do. I'm talking about actual they tyranny. Do. If they right, come to take your guns, are you going to fight back? Yes, but I'm saying they think they're talking about actual tyranny. Well, give me specific examples then. I, that, I I'm saying trying- we're not yeah, there right. yet, but I gave you the most extreme realistic example I could think of, which was Hitler. Like, right. And what I'm saying is that they believe that they are fighting Hitler and that it justifies. Their, I don't mean metaphorical behavior. Hitler. I mean, actual I mean, like an actual government doing that stuff. Right. And so I just right. said, if they came to take your guns away, would you fight? And you said, yes. OK, well, Hitler would have done that on during his rise. Right. So like uh, my point is take my guns, I would fight. Yes. Right. So there does become a point when governments become tyrannical and oppressive enough that Actually, good people do fight. I don't, I'm not saying these are good people. I'm not saying this was the right thing to do. I don't think even this would be the right way to do it. Like the whole thing was stupid. But um, I think we're fooling ourselves if we think this is just some kind of aberration and it's going to go away, that these are anomalies. Because I think they're going to get worse. Um, and it's going to come from the left and the right and anarchists. Like, anarchists. <sighs> There's anarchists who consider themselves leftists and rightists anarchists, which I don't really understand, but whatever. <laughs> it's going to come from both sides that want to tear the system down. Some are going to want to do it because of Marxism. Some are want to do it for some other reason. But the more they feel like the system is oppressing them, the more they're likely to do this. And the more that we destroy our economy and keep ourselves in lockdowns, the more desperate people are going to get. The more we gin up uh, – uh, and, and try and create a race war where there wasn't one before, the more upset people are going to become and the more they're likely to do this. So uh, m- my point isn't to justify what these guys are doing, but my point is to warn you, like, this isn't going to get better unless we start rolling back through voting and legitimate means and through argument and convincing people. Unless we start rolling back this tyranny, it will. this will get worse. More people will do this. Yes. Here's my point. As someone in chat is saying that uh, there is a line. Of course there's a line. I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying we're not remotely there. And there's a danger in empowering people to feel like, look, I obviously agree that I obviously believe that we are on the right side of this culture war and that's not a right or left war. It's an individualism or authoritarian war. It's not a right or left thing. And I believe we're on the the individualism side. It's the right side to be on. But at the same time, that Nietzsche quote, be careful fighting monsters lest you become the monster you fight. It is so easy to become blind to your own ability to to, to engage in evil when you start to believe that you are morally, righteously justified in everything and you don't question yourself. And that's all I'm saying is to be talking about where we're at right now. I just wanted to be very clear about what you thought about the kidnapping plot to anyone who's watching, who's going to try and misconstrue what you're saying, because I do not believe we're anywhere close to a point where there's a Hitler that needs to be fought and that people need to go out and start kidnapping people and becoming a, becoming monstrous. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you were saying that. I want to be very clear about what you're not saying. I don't think <clears throat> I don't think that. No, I disagree. Somebody says, I love you, Carrie, but honey, we can't wait till we're there to act. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's saying, well, I'm justified in going out and doing horrible things right now. I won't be. I, I'm not a part of that. I'm not a part of encouraging people to act like monsters because we're on the side of good. The side of good doesn't need for you to become monstrous. Self-defense is one thing, but but going out and starting and engaging in, you know, uh, I, I, I believe in the non-aggression principle for a reason. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think there's some nuance here, though. And I'm, this is this yeah. is the gray area that is uncomfortable for people. And I want to have the gray. I just want to point out that there's a gray area here. They were going after government officials. Look, they also planned to kill her. So, like, that's a, also crazy, right? So yeah. they were, but yeah. they were they were attacking a government official. So they were generally aimed in a better direction than attacking random civilians. And I think their line was way too, way too soon. It's nowhere near time to do anything like that. 
Um, I agree with that. But uh, I wouldn't wait till Hitler's in charge. The, I think, I for me, a big line is when they start confiscating guns. If they're going to start coming, taking firearms. Yes. That that Because that is a move that prohibits any self-defense later. Um, so as long as you've got the ability to speak and you've got the ability to defend yourself you can keep speaking and trying to convince minds. Um, but I don't know. I know you say we're very, very far away. I hope you're right. I, didn't, I don't know how far away we are from people coming to the house to I, take guns. I don't know. Well, I think we're far away um, in terms of circumstance right now, but I don't know how far away we are in terms of time. That's all oh, I mean. Yeah, like, okay, I don't fair. know if it's around the corner or not, but we're, where we're at right now is not there. It, we could make a big leap in a short amount of time. I have no idea. But, but, and, and again, I guess, look, somebody in the chat was like, oh no, they're breaking up. I don't like when mom and dad fight. We're not fighting. We're you not guys, actually fighting. I know we, we have, we get passionate about our disagreements sometimes, but Carter and I love each other. So we're able to do that. It's fine. Just like when you have disagreements with your best friend or your spouse or whatever, your business partner. Um, I, I just, if we talk about specific things, maybe we won't have as much of a disagreement. Like Laura said, we probably agree on more than we don't. If you, if you give me a specific example of like, like saying, what about if there's a Hitler? I don't know what that means. People use that all the time now. So, but, but if you say, what if here's a policy thing, or here's a, here's an action, what if the government comes and starts confiscating guns? Okay. Yes. That is a line too far. Right. Well, but I don't That's think we're that far thing. away from that is my point. Right. And I don't I don't okay. I get I get that people are scared right now. You know, another one I haven't I don't know the answer to this because I don't know where my line is for everything. I know that that's a line, the gun confiscation. I don't know where my right. line is for everything. But uh, how long will they be able to keep businesses closed in the name of COVID? Is there five years, 10 years? How long will they do this before right. fighting back physically is by the way, if someone asks who would I would. I'm not going to kidnap anyone. They're saying, who would you kidnap first? I kid It was also just a dumb plan. I wouldn't be kidnapping anyone. That's not a thing. But yeah, look, I, I, um, I don't know where that line is. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't thought about it. Um, and my only point is what someone just said, deranged hermit in chat says each person has a different line. That's kind of my point. Each person has a different line and some people like Ted Kaczynski, that line is way off on one end of the bell curve. And we all look at that and go, <laughs> yeah, no, right? That's way off, right? But the more tyrannical this country becomes, the more people feel like the government's crossed that line. Their line is, you know, there are more people have lines closer to, you know, they're getting closer and closer to more people's lines. And that's what I'm concerned about because... I, I do think that if we don't argue our way out of this, a civil, some sort of civil unrest, I don't know, I want to call it a civil war, but something's going to collapse. Something's going to collapse here and it's going to be pretty horrific. Uh, so that's all I want to say. And I didn't want to shy away from this topic because I know it's a tough topic. And I could have easily said, he's not an ANCAP. Look, his flag was the black one with the red A. And that means he's a socialist anarchist. And now I don't have to talk about it. And what a bad guy. And let's move on. I could have done that. But I didn't want to yeah. do that because I want to address the facts of this. He might be an ANCAP. I don't know. I don't agree with what he did. A lot of their points aren't that crazy. They're not that crazy. They're, a lot of those points that they made are principled and correct. Those are, those are decent points. Many of them. Not all of them, but... So I think it's worth hey, having that conversation. 